The diagnostic perineal lavage is a technique that has fallen somewhat out of disfavor in trauma circles as the FAST exam has replaced it. But there will be times when you don't have ultrasound available and you'll need to determine whether or not a patient has blood in the abdomen. The, the DPL is, or diagnostic peritoneal lavage is designed specifically for that. The idea is if you have a patient you suspect has blood in the abdomen is that you put a catheter underneath the umbilicus into the abdomen and then withdraw fluid. If you get blood back, that's considered a positive tap if it's more than five cc's of blood. If you don't get blood back, then what you do is you put saline into the abdomen and then slosh that around so that it goes through all the abdomen cavities. And if there's blood in there, it will uh, contaminate that uh, fluid. You then drop the bag to the floor, and if blood comes out uh, of greater than 100,000 red cells or more than 500 white cells per cc, this is considered a positive tap, and the patient needs an operation. Additionally, if you get back uh, intestinal contents or food particles, that's also considered a positive tap. There are two different ways of doing the diagnostic parallel lavage. There's the closed technique using a needle and a Seldinger technique, and there is the open technique. First, we'll demonstrate the uh, closed technique or the Seldinger technique. There are commercial kits available to do this, and most of these include a, a, a needle with a wire and an angiocath, as you see here. And the idea here is that you're going to advance this needle through the abdominal wall. You will feel a pop as you pop through the anterior fascia, and you'll feel a more subtle pop as you pop through the uh, peritoneal uh, structures. The other idea here is that you want to go below the umbilicus and aim towards the pelvis. Because if you remember, the uh, bifurcation of the aorta is right below the umbilicus. If you aim directly toward that, you may get a positive uh, arterial blood gas that you don't want. The only time you wouldn't go below the umbilicus is if you suspect a patient has a pelvic fracture. You're going to want to go above the umbilicus because if you recall, the retroperitoneum actually comes forward to just below the umbilicus. And if you do your diagnostic perineal lavage there, you're going to get a false positive tap. Additionally, if the patient is pregnant, the uterus will displace uh, the abdominal contents upwards and you don't want to stick the needle into the uterus. So you're going to want to go higher in the pregnant patient. So once again, the closed diagnostic perineal lavage is you're going to aim the needle uh, down towards the pelvis, and you're going to feel a pop as you pop through the uh, anterior fascia, and you're going to feel another pop as you pop through the peritoneum. You're going to then aspirate, and I'm not getting anything back at this moment, so now what I'm going to do is actually going to pull the needle out of the angiocath, and we're going to do the Seldinger technique using the wire. The wire is going to go into the angiocath, and it's going in nice and easily. If you meet resistance, you're probably not in the pelvis, and this needs to be repeated. You're going to place this in until you have a few centimeters left hanging outside of the uh, angiocath. You're going to remove this dilator. Now, the angiocath comes out, leaving the wire in place. We're then going to make a small nick next to the wire using a number 11 blade right next to the wire, making a hole big enough so that our catheter will go through this. We now are going to put in the catheter. This diagnostic perineal catheter, which comes in this kit, has holes uh, all the way around it, coming up about halfway. Once again, anytime you do the Seldinger technique, you want to make sure you have more wire than you have length of your catheter so that you don't lose control of the wire and it ends up in the abdomen. So we're going to go ahead and put this in and thread it in over the wire. Maintaining control of the wire both below the catheter and above the catheter. Now I have the wire up above and below. And now I have control of the wire up above. And now what I do is I actually insert the catheter using a, a kind of a spiral downward motion, uh, advancing it into the abdominal cavity. And this is going nice and easily. And once I have this in place, the wire comes out. And then I aspirate to see if I have blood in the abdomen. And I'm aspirating and I'm getting out blood. You can see I have about uh, eight cc's of blood that's come out of this, this uh, tap. This uh, constitutes a positive tap and this patient needs an exploratory laparotomy. If in fact I had gotten no blood out, as you see here, then the, the technique is to put fluid into the abdomen. And you're going to take warm saline. You want to use warm saline because you don't want to make the patient hypothermic. And generally, this is going to be based on the patient's weight.
If you have a very small patient, you don't want to put the entire liter in. If you have a large patient, you're going to put more fluid in the abdomen. Generally, you're going to use about 10 cc's per kilogram. So for the average 70 kilogram man, you use about 700 cc's of fluid. So we're going to take and put the saline into the abdomen and we're going to run this bag of saline into the abdomen. The key point here is if you let all the fluid go in, you're not going to be able to get it out. Now, if, if you've ever siphoned the gasoline from a car, uh, which is becoming more common these days, uh, if you recall, if you don't have any fluid in the tube, you cannot get it to come out when uh, you get to the end. So you're going to put in about 700 cc's of this warm saline, then drop the bag to the floor and see how much of this fluid comes out after you've sloshed it around inside the abdomen. We'll now uh, demonstrate the open surgical technique. Uh, for diagnostic parent lavage. This technique requires a, a two people to do because you need an additional set of hands. Uh, while we're getting our stuff together, we'll talk about some of the complications uh, and contraindications to doing this procedure. Uh, if you have a patient who has had prior abdominal surgery, a diagnostic perineal lavage is, uh, is relatively contraindicated because you're not going to be able to distribute the fluid in the abdomen. Likewise, if you have a patient who needs an operation already, you know he's got a gunshot wound to the abdomen, or his abdomen is expanding in front of your eyes and he's hypotensive, he doesn't need a diagnostic perineal lavage. He needs to go to the operating room. Patients in whom you would like to do this procedure are patients in whom you can't really figure out what's going on in the abdomen. You suspect it, but you can't figure it out. A patient who has a head injury, a patient who is under the influence of drug or alcohol, a patient uh, who is unconscious is not going to be someone who can tell you whether or not their abdomen hurts, and you're going to want to do a diagnostic parental lavage to rule out intra-abdominal hemorrhage. The uh, open DPL is, a, is technically a surgical procedure, and so this needs to be done sterilely. You need to make sure that you, once again, that you've uh, thoroughly prepped the abdominal wall, and you also want to use some local anesthesia if you can. Remember, we're going to go below the umbilicus unless this patient suspected of having a pelvic fracture or is pregnant. So we're going to go below the umbilicus in the midline. We're going to raise a wheel using some uh, lidocaine with epi. And it's very important to use lidocaine with epi because you want to minimize bleeding from the skin so that you don't get a false positive tap. We're then going to make an incision about one and a half to two centimeters vertically below the umbilicus. And at this juncture, it's, it's useful to have an assistant. Uh, and where I'm going to go ahead and spread with my uh, clamps one direction, my assistant will spread the opposite direction. And the idea here is we're trying to find the fascia, the external fascia. And it looks like we're getting down to it. Spread just one more time for me. And now we're going to put in some uh, retractors. Usually Army-Navy retractors are very good for this circumstance. Now that we have the uh, anterior fascia exposed, we're going to want to incise the anterior fascia in the midline using the knife. And here you see it being incised. And what should come into view is a little bit of properitoneal fat. We're now going to spread this properitoneal fat looking for the peritoneum. So I'm spreading this fat both ways. And now I'm going to try to grab the peritoneum. And there you see I've got a hole of peritoneum. We're going to grab that with an allos clamp on either side. There's one side. And we can see that's a little blood tinge, so that's a little suspicious. There might be some bleeding in the abdomen, but we need to confirm that. So now we've got this uh, peritoneum. We're going to take a pair of scissors, make a small nick in the peritoneum so we can put the catheter in. Make sure we're in the peritoneum. And relax on that a little bit. There we go. There we go. We have an opening in the peritoneum. And now we're going to take our catheter. The catheter is going to go into the abdomen. Once again, we want to aim down towards the pelvis. And we put this in nicely, easily down into the pelvis. And we're going to aspirate. And once again, the, the, this is, will be considered positive if we get more than 5 cc's of blood out. Now, if the catheter is in the abdomen, we're going to aspirate. And as you see, this looks like a positive tap as there's about 10 cc's of blood coming out. If this tap were negative, once again, uh, we would attach the uh, IV tubing to this and run in about 700 cc's of warm saline into this patient. We're running that in widely, and it looks like it's running nice and wide open. 
We're now going to slosh the abdomen around a little bit to allow the uh, fluid to get into all the spaces of the abdomen. Now we've got about, as you can see, about 700 cc's of warm saline in the abdomen. I'm not going to take this bag and throw it onto the floor, and I'm going to let the fluid run out of the abdomen onto the floor, and there's some fluid coming out. We'll let that uh, come out for a little bit. Now the question is, is does this patient need an operation? Well, we need to send this fluid to the lab to see what the cell count is. If there's more than 100,000 red cells or more than 500 C, uh, white cells per cc, then this patient would be considered to have a positive tap and would likely need an exploratory laparotomy.